In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. In the waters of baptism, Barb died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I, who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will. I, the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them. They turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them heart for love alone. I will speak my word to them, whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord, is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will I'd like to offer a very warm welcome to all of you together as we gather to mourn the loss of, pray for, and to present before God Barb App, this beautiful woman. I'd like to invite everyone to be seated, and I'd also like to invite forward Steve and Laura for the words of remembrance. Barbara Ann Mary Kinley Apt. Hi, I'm her daughter. <laughs> I need to start over again. I'm her daughter, Laura. I'm going to kiss you with some memories of my mom, our mom. We're so blessed to have her. Steve Carolyn and I would like to thank you for joining us to celebrate mom's life today. Thank you all to all have been our solid support system, especially in the last couple of years as mom's health declined. It was a difficult time. So a special thanks to IHM. Father John, Pam, Sister Eleanor, thank you so much. Health Partners Hospice, their team was amazing for us. And the Glen, where mom spent her last six months of her life. 
She was such an inspiration. She also was a great mom, a grandmother, a great grandmother, a mentor to many, my spiritual advisor, and one of my best friends. Mom showed me how to have great faith, trust in God, and God would get us through anything. She loved with all of her heart. She knew how to be loyal. She loved to read a good book. She was a fan. She'd cheer the home team on, depending on the time of year. Twins, Vikings, Wilds, any gopher team, depending on the season. Mom loved the water, from sailing to taking aerobics, sometimes leading it. Tai Chi Cha at the lake. She loved to have fun, tell a good joke, laugh out loud. She liked to smile for a while. She had a rhyme every time. She also had a flair for being slightly dramatic, and she loved watching and appreciating a great sunset. I have so many beautifuls of my mom. She was mother to me. With that title, she sent a lot of family love. She created many lasting memories and defining moments. Family dinners, a day spent at Shady Oak Lake with dad coming from work to join us with a picnic dinner, and more fun in the water as a family till dusk. But I have so many stories to tell. I read this the day after mom passed. Enjoy the journey. Like the river has many paths, so it is a journey in life. We find our strength, our softness, our troubled waters, and our calmness. My grandson Rowan and I were talking about great grandma being in heaven. And he said he was sad. And also that he liked to be there too. And I said I wanted him to stay here on earth. And he said, I would be. I'd be in your heart. That's where you are, Mom. A bright light in my heart. I'll never forget you. I love you, Mom. If you see a monarch butterfly in the sky flying by, I believe it is my mom saying hi. Mom, enjoy your sunsets holding hands with Dad. Your journey has just begun. Namaste. Pardon me for not wearing a jacket up here. I overheated and had a little panic attack at the same time. Mom would want me to have this mic just right. Thank you, sis. That was lovely. Good afternoon. I'm Barb's son, Steve. Again, thank you so much for being with us today to remember and celebrate Mom's life. Anyone who has ever been gifted with the task of writing an obituary or eulogy will understand me when I say it is a deeply challenging process. I found myself just stopped and stopped again by the seemingly impossible task of sharing a few words of remembrance about mom. I sought counsel from a dear friend who wisely said, just focus on what really mattered to mom, to think about her convictions, how those strongly held values translated into what we will remember and take with us as her legacy into our own lives. When looking through this lens, it became easy to recognize the things that mattered to mom. Let's face it, anyone who knew our mother knew that she was a force, passionate and dedicated to the things that mattered to her. First and foremost, nothing was more important to mom, even in her darkest time after dad's passing, than tending to her soul and her relationship with God her faith, her time of daily prayer and study of scripture, the Eucharist, were all priorities throughout her life. Dedicated to lifelong learning, she attended countless retreats and workshops to feed and grow her spirit. What also mattered to mom was her dedication to and participation in her faith community. During her more than half a century as an IHM parishioner, she brought her gifts of compassion to others as a Stephen minister, her gift as orator, proclaiming the word at liturgies, and as a mentor, training others for that privilege. 
as an educator teaching catechism when we were younger, and as a team player participating as a volunteer for Loaves and Fishes. What mattered to Grandma Barb was supporting her children and grandchildren in life events. She was our biggest fan. It simply sparked joy for her. She and my dad spent countless hours driving to every activity imaginable. Hockey, soccer, track, gymnastics, softball, volleyball, speech, band and choir concerts, church events, shows, dance competitions, awards, and of course, graduations. They would haul their chairs or comfy cushions wherever the action was. They showed up ready to watch and cheer, celebrating talent and interest, milestones and successes along the way. Mom's cheerleading did not end on the field, in the gymnasium, or at the auditorium. She loved, taking all, she loved talking all about it afterwards, all in great detail, comforting and listening if things didn't turn out so well. Another important value in Mom's life was taking care of herself. She was committed to wellness as a priority. She was dedicated to regular exercise, water aerobics, biking, and tai chi cha with my dad. Even as a child, I remember her doing stretches and exercises in the living room to take care of her physical well-being. She was healthy and strong. Barb had a fun-loving and adventurous spirit. Her enthusiasm for enjoying life experiences included dancing with dad, playing bridge, attending Guthrie and orchestra hall performances, cruises, and one of her favorites, sailing on Lake Pepin. Her adventures extended to her love of reading, always having a book on hand. Finally, mom loved holidays. Christmas and Easter were among her favorites, and she always put on a beautiful, delicious, and fun gathering for us. We were grateful they kept the ping pong table up for all those years. Barb more than held her own in our highly competitive holiday tournaments. So, Ma, what mattered to you will continue to matter to us. We will remember your dedication to your faith, your service to community, and love of family. We will remember the way you always supported us and how you were an example on how we should tend to our body, mind, and spirit. We are comforted in knowing you are reunited with Dad. Thank you, Mom. We love you and we miss you. And know we will carry you in our hearts. Thank you, Steve and Laura. Let's all stand together. Let us pray. O God, who are mercy for sinners and the happiness of your saints, give, we pray, to your servant Barb, for whom today we perform the fraternal offices of burial, a share with your chosen ones in the blessedness you give, so that on the day of resurrection, freed from the bonds of mortality, she may come before your face through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated again. And I'd like to invite forward Carolyn for the first reading. Thanks. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There's a time for everything, a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to rebuild, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to turn away, a time to search and a time to lose, 
a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be quiet and a time to speak up, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What do people really get for all their hard work? I've thought about this in connection with the various kinds of work God has given people to do. God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. So I concluded that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to enjoy themselves as long as they can. And people should eat and drink and enjoy the fruits of their labor for these are the gifts from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would Michaela come forward, please, for the second reading? A reading from the book of Revelations. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain, for the old order has passed away. 
The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Then he said, Write these words down, for they are trustworthy and true. He said to me, They are accomplished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give a gift from the spring of life-giving water. The victor will inherit these gifts, and I shall be his God, and he will be my son. The word of the Lord. that you have promised. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith in me also. In my Father's house there are many dwellings. I will go and prepare a place for you. Then I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Thomas said to him, We do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. If I may, on behalf of Immaculate Heart of Mary, Parish offer all of you our heartfelt condolences at the passing of Barb. And I, I want to begin uh, with just by saying something that is probably very obvious, but it's one of the reasons that we are gathering here today is to mourn the loss of Barb. And I particularly wanted to say that today because I know our community, Immaculate Heart of Mary, is mourning her loss greatly. Partly, not, not partly, a big reason is because of the, the deep way in which she was so profoundly involved here. I've heard from a number of parishioners that she was the first one that they met when they came here. And that's because she was so deeply involved in our parish here. For me, she wasn't the first person that I met but she was one of, those, one of the first people who offered me a very kind word, and I am so grateful for it. It was after a, a Mass, and she spoke, and she said you know, that she could hear me clearly. You know, and, you know, it was about that. Which also spoke to me that she was very kind, because I heard from ten other people how they could not hear me. <laughs> so, um, so a very kind person. So we, we are mourning her loss, all of us. And to say that, of course, I, part of the reason I want to say that is because the fact that we are mourning her loss in no way takes away from our also celebrating her life. Those two go hand in hand together. And also, the, this reality of mourning her loss doesn't speak against our faith. Of course, we have the, a beautiful faith, which we are also celebrating today, about our, our faith in what Jesus has done, a faith that Barb held deeply, our faith in the resurrection, our, our hope and faith in the resurrection. But the, the, that, that hope and that faith is meant to touch our mourning. It's meant to inform our broken hearts as we experience the loss of Barb, to bring healing to it, to mend the sting, but we still mourn, and that's a reality for us. 
And often that, that mourning, it simply shows the love that we have that can't be expressed in any other way. So uh, even as we celebrate, so that we, sometimes we have those conflicting experience of wanting to celebrate, but also this desire to mourn. And we remember to, here today, we're doing both. And they, they're not contradictory. As we allow ourselves to hurt is often the best way to heal and, to, and also to manifest our love. So we're doing that today as we're mourning the loss of Barb. We, of course, are also celebrating her life. And part, part of the way we do that, of course, is by sharing stories. And I'm so grateful for, for Laura and Steve as they shared those stories today, so beautifully done and brings out so much of her, of her life and her personality. Of course, today we're also celebrating our faith. And uh, beautiful for me to hear from Steve how deep, and I knew it already, but just to hear again how deep Barb's faith was. And we're gathered here in faith, which means that there is a whole other aspect, another thing that is going on that we don't, we're not privy to, that we don't get to see, but our faith informs our hearts uh, with that deep hope that it is happening. And that's that encounter of Barb with our Heavenly Father, the welcoming of her into the, the heavenly courts. And that's something for us to, to ponder today and to, to consider more deeply uh, in the way that our Father is welcoming her. Jesus in the Gospel today says these beautiful words, I am going to the Father's house. There I will go and prepare a place for you. And I, I just think it's wonderful to imagine that, that there's a special place prepared for Barb. And of course, there can be a temptation just to think it's, you know, it's a, a physical place. But where Jesus went was right to the Father's heart. And so there's a special place being prepared in the, in the very core of the Father, welcomed into her, welcomed into him, him welcoming her into himself. And of course, all of heaven is where God is. So all of heaven, all of those who are there, gazing upon Barb as she is entering that place, that has been prepared for her by the very grace of Jesus, by his life. And beautiful, again, to see the way that Barb took in his grace, longed for it, studied it, practiced it, lived it, drank it in, loved the Eucharist, all of those things. She, she is now being welcomed before the Father in that way, in all of the ways that she has been prepared. We're, we're told also by Paul you know, that there's no way really to know. He says that there's what God has prepared for us, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. And sometimes when we hear that, we kind of think, well, okay, <laughs> well, whatever comes, comes. But he gives us those words to whet our appetite, to, to encourage us to consider what might it be like to go and experience the love of God in that most profound way, even if we can't get to it fully. So we can, we can ponder that today and just we put the caveat afterwards. Whatever it is, even if it's what we might think today, we know that it's a million times greater what God has prepared for Barb and what he is preparing for us um, if, we, if we choose to accept it and lean into it all the more. And uh, so I, I, Laura and Steve already laid out Barb's virtues and her beauty. I just picked a couple of them uh, just, to, just to highlight what the Father might be revealing for all of heaven today. One of those, it was one of those traits of Barb that struck me whenever I met her is her gentleness. And uh, um, I mentioned that to the family. And of course, there are times when she could be particular, <laughs> but she was she was undeniably gentle, and she had a gentle soul. She was a Stephen minister here in the parish. And it's one of the requirements to be a Stephen minister is you have to be gentle because you have to be present with those who are in the most vulnerable state. And she, she, she beautifully exemplified that gentleness. And in our world today, of course, gentleness 
is not one of those virtues that is held up. It's often strength and might, um, conquering other people. But in heaven, that's one of the, one of the greatest virtues. And today, even though it was it maybe today, the Father is revealing that for all of heaven as those who look upon her see that beauty of that, that mantle of gentleness being revealed. Remember that even Jesus himself said those words, Come to me, all you who labored and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest because I am meek and, jump and gentle. And so he himself was meek and gentle. And uh, Barb, in her own way, took on that mantle of Christ. And as she is going before the Father, our Father sees in that way an image of himself. And of course, looks upon her and says, well done, my good and faithful servant, come. You who are, have, have become me in the world. I'm also struck, just reading over the, the bulletin day of her, the bulletin today, of her love for beauty. I mean, even something that simple love of flowers, but her love of the orchestra, her love of even Tai Chi, maybe it was part of her health, but those beautiful movements that are a part of that. Of course, I don't know anything about Tai Chi, but, but it's beautiful. And her, her, her love of all of those, those beautiful things, uh, and her love of God himself, now she is going before the one, and it, it's hard for us even to imagine what this would be like, but she's going before the one who is the source of all beauty. <laughs> The one, if, when we see any beauty in this world, is only participating in the, is, is only beautiful insofar as it's participating in the beauty of God, the, the all beautiful one. And it's wonderful that her eyes have been trained to beauty, her, the, her soul has been trained to that, so that she can receive even more deeply the beauty of God, to recognize him more fully. And of course, as he sees her, he recognizes her in that way. It's beautiful just to, to contemplate that wonder. And of course, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention her deep love of the written word, of course, but in a very special way, her love of the word of God. And I, I've heard stories and stories of the way that she, she used to be the, she used to train our lectors here and how concerned she was, first, that the word actually be heard. That's a trouble when you have troublesome microphones, but it's so absolutely important that it actually be heard, but then to proclaim it well. And she had such a care for that. And of course, a love of it as she read it and studied it herself. And she, so she had that word burning in her, has it burning in her, and now she is going before the, the Word Himself, Jesus Himself. There's a, a deep connection already between the two. They know each other. And it's beautiful just to contemplate what, that wonder in which she's experiencing today. And then finally, of course, the, the most obvious virtue is her love. And um, the few times that I went and visited Barb, I was so touched, I mean, just by the love that Laura and her family had for her, and then also just to hear of her stories of the way she loved her children. Of course, each of you have experienced that love as well. What's so absolutely important for us to remember is that she is now going before the one who is love itself. And what that means for us is that Barb's love is not ending. <laughs> and how could it? because she, she cared for all of you so deeply. And when now, when she goes before the one who is love and her love is increased, how could she have some kind of amnesia and forget about all of you now? Now that love is even perfected and that love for you is increased in a, in a most perfect and pure way. In a very real way, all of us are there with her and with God because she is carrying us, she's carrying you before her, before God, whispering to God, 
uh, in her own care for, for all of you. So because of that, I, I wouldn't be surprised if in the days, maybe in the sign of a butterfly, we don't know, but in the days, the weeks, the, the hours, the months ahead, you, you'll, still, you'll still experience in some way the power of her love because she is living. That's, that's what our faith and our hope proclaims with the one who is love. So that's, that's just a glimpse of some of the hope that we have by what Christ has done for us. And it's good to con con continue to contemplate that reality, even as our hope says that Barb is contemplating that fully today. So it's in that hope that we, we turn to God to pray. So I want to invite us just to um, take a moment of quiet and we'll pray for, for Barb. We'll offer up our words of gratitude for her in silence. And then we'll present her before our Father as well. I'd like to invite us to stand. And I'd like to invite Mel forward, please, for the words, for the prayers of the faithful. And as we pray, the response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For Barb, who has given new life in baptism and nourished at the table of the Savior, may she now have a place at the heavenly banquet with God and all the saints in glory, we pray to the Lord. I turned it off. For Barb's children and spouses, Steve and Joni, Laura, Carolyn, and Scott, may their sadness be softened by her love for them, their love for each other, and by the loving support of family and friends, we pray. For Barb's grandchildren, Mel, Jake, Michaela, Rachel, John, Ella, and great-grandson Rowan, may the love and care of their parents reflect the love Barb has for them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Barb's relatives, may memories of family time celebrated together be a source of gratitude for the gift of Barb's life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Barb's friends, may their love and respect for her bring others together in friendship, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our relatives and friends who have died, especially Barb's husband, Joseph, parents, Henry and Blanche, siblings, Virginia, Jack, Marie, and twin brother, Bill, May they welcome Barb into the peace and happiness of heaven, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here, blessed to have known and loved Barb, may we live with the hope that one day we will be reunited with her in the kingdom of light and peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we, your sons and daughters, come before you as we present Barb before, into your loving arms. Yes, you would hear these prayers we present and wipe the tears of those who mourn her loss. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated.
with an everlasting love I have called you and you are mine I have loved you with an everlasting love I have called you and you are mine seek the face of the Lord and long for him he will bring you his joy and his hope I have loved you with an everlasting love I have called you and you are mine I have loved you with an everlasting love I have called you and you are mine seek the face of the Lord and long for him he will bring you his care and his love I have loved you with an everlasting I have called you, and you are mine. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you, and you are mine. I invite you please to stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, our good and good of all, Holy Church. Be near, O Lord, we pray, to your servant Barb, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to her, or any human fault have affected her, it may by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel or be seated as you are able. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. All right, let's please stand together. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. I'd invite you please to kneel or be seated as you're able. And for communion today, everyone's welcome to come forward in the communion line. If you won't be receiving communion, just simply make a, a sign like this, and we'll, the minister and I will be happy to give you a blessing. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. claim you as my choice be still and know I am here I am hope for all who are hopeless I am eyes for all who long to see in the shadows of the night I will be your light come and rest in me not be afraid I am with you I have called you each by name come and follow me I will bring you home I love you you are I am strength for all the despairing, healing for the ones who dwell in shame. All the blind will see, the lame will all run free, and all will know my name. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me. I will bring you home. I love you. You are mine. I am the word that leads all to freedom. I am the peace the world cannot give. I will call your name 
embracing all your pain. Stand up now, walk and live. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me. I will bring you home. I love you. You are
in ora mortis, in ora mortis nostre, in ora mortis mortis nostre, in ora mortis nostre. Let's stand together and let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant Barb, who today has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. The hand of God shall hold you. The peace of God enfold you. The love that dreamed and formed you still surrounds you here today. The light of God beside you Above, beneath, inside you, the light that shines to guide you home to the loving hand of God. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. The hand of God shall hold you the peace of God enfold you, the love that dreamed and formed you still surrounds you here today. The light of God beside you, above, beneath, inside you, the light that shines to guide you home to the loving hand of God. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Barb in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Barb in this life. 
They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our sister to her final place of rest. Amen. joy the blessed assurance gives. He lives, he lives who once was dead. He lives my everlasting head. He lives to bless me with his love. He lives to plead for me above. He lives my hungry soul to feed. He lives to help in time of need. He lives and grants me daily breath. He lives and I shall conquer death. He lives my mansion to prepare. He lives to bring me safely there. He lives all glory to his name. He lives my Savior still the same. What joy the blessed assurance gives. I know that my Redeemer